Good evening, good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another live stream with myself, Roots TV. Today, this evening, we're joined by Clapton CFC. How are you doing, guys? Good, thank you. Not too bad, not too bad. Good, good, good. Now, before we start, I just need to make sure that I get the, the titles right because Jack, Mr. aka Mr. Jack of all trades, he wears three hats. He's the captain, goalkeeper for the men's team, and then the assistant manager for the women's team. Is that correct? That is correct. Good, good, good. And then, Mr. Arkwin, you're just the player manager. You know what I mean? You've only got That's the two. It. That's it. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. You need one. to save your game up, man. You need another one as well, man. That's it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Busier, maybe. I <laughs> Well, that's good, man. Thank you guys for joining me this evening. Um, how have you guys been during this lockdown period? Um, not too bad, not too bad. I said this is a short one. I'm still at work, so it's kind of like the day is kind of still whizzed by. So in the evenings, obviously, you've got to keep yourself busy and whatnot. But I've just been preempting the players, just making sure they're ready because we, we anticipated kind of like going back on the fifth. So we can't we can't let you know, let up uh, in terms of our league challenge. So we need to be ready, firing, ready to go, especially with the games before Christmas. Make sure we you know we keep the momentum going because we was on a little bit of a run, you know, before the lockdown, and it's kind of difficult because pre season was probably the longest it's ever been. Mm. And then obviously, then you're still getting your fitness up, then we started to build momentum, and now we're back into lockdown again. So we just got to make sure we just hit the fight, hit the ground running again. Yeah, just to add to that, um, obviously, I'm quite lucky to be able to work from home and being based in the Wolfram Stone, there's been a few parks. Uh, been able to do sort of one-on-one -on -one sessions with uh, sort of the goalkeepers at the club and do my own sort of thing. But obviously not everyone's in that same sort of situation, which is, you know, it's difference between the first lockdown, whereas in the summer, you know, everyone's willing to go outside. Whereas now, it's, you know, in the winter, it's a little bit harder to get motivated. So it's been a little bit difficult, but um, we're just happy, especially with the announcements, hopefully from um, uh, down the street today, hopefully we'll get back really soon. And everything, everyone's just really looking forward to start playing again. Of course, of course, of course. Great news. Um, obviously, that's been released today. Mr. Johnson, our Prime Minister, credit to him. Well, I don't know about credit to him. But <laughs> he's, released, he's released the good news. That obviously, we can go back to grassroots football and grassroots sports in general from the 2nd of December. So, again, everyone watching who's involved in grassroots, I'm sure you guys are energised and ready to go. Hopefully, you haven't been eating and eating too much, and yet your diet's decent. I mean... <laughs> Is it now? Like I heard something about the training regimes. Has the training regimes been on point? Well, we don't know. I mean, back as I said, the last lockdown, everyone was throwing their five k runs in. Everyone was buying a bike. You know, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's all a bit different, but you know, the Saturdays are free, isn't it? So, in the in the sense of where you would have a game, there's no excuse to not go for a run. You know, do a few bits in the morning or in the afternoon when you would have had a game. So. I mean, you just got to keep yourself active and ready, like I said, because, you know, if you don't do it, the opposition will, and it will show when we go back. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely guilty for throwing them 5K times in the group. <laughs> just trying to, you know, keep everybody sort of motivated. Uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of, it's all different now. I'm on the game. I think I'm sure half the team's probably vegan or vegetarian now, to be honest, with the way that things are going at the moment. But, yeah, um, obviously really hard to sort of try and, you know, keep it going and hopefully, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see when we come back. Our first training session, I think we'll probably have a good match before we even have a first training session, so we'll see, we'll see very quickly who's been doing stuff and who hasn't. Listen, there's going to be a lot of double headers lined up as well to pack in all those games in before the end of December, before the end of the year. Um, I've got to shout out to a couple of people in the stream already. Elliot Crosby, shout out to you guys locked in. Shout yeah. out to Sam Dar as well, he's locked in as well. Um, I want to get to know you guys more, because um, again, I came across you guys, I think maybe last year. Um, I'll let the video do the talking, but again, I come across you guys last year. And then let me see if he just jogs your memory a little bit. Clapton FC before, and from last year we turned into Clapton CFC, going from being a fan group to being our own club, we're running the club and we're doing it how we want to do it. Oh, it's amazing, there's nothing compared to it, do you know what I mean? level, it's, that's why it comes, do you know what I mean? It's the community, it's the atmosphere that we, we, everyone generates. So we're excited, we want to be here, we're ready to motivate him. We're ready to sub in, when are they ready to let us in? When are they ready to let us play? Of what it's 
like to be uh, to be in the football league in the, the Premier League. So, yeah, so. There we go, man. That was from non-league day, man. Brings back good memories, right? Yeah, that was a crazy attendance again. It's always big when we face Stonewall, so um, kick it out with there. So there's quite a few people in attendance, so we was happy we could just put on a show um, for the people in attendance. Yeah, great to bring back memories of that. That's probably one of my favourite of the days, just playing football. I mean, that's just absolutely incredible. That's sort of, as I was sort of alluded to in that video, that sort of get a little glimpse of what it's like to actually be a professional footballer, just maybe for just 90 minutes, even though the quality is obviously nowhere near as good, but just to have that sort of, um, you know, unconditional love from the fans and all that sort of thing and you know every home game that we have is not just complete it's an event like it's definitely worth um witnessing at least once in your life so yeah hopefully more of them scenes again very very soon fingers crossed man fingers crossed can't wait to get back to them scenes especially um talk to you about clapton cfc because you guys have got a rich history um mm -hmm. a lot of stuff has been going on especially even this season as well but talk to you about the, the history of the club um <laughs> It's well rehearsed. So, um, I see where where are you? I don't want to hear rehearsed, man. Come on. Well, I say it's well rehearsed as in like obviously this is what this is the question, the million dollar question everyone asked to ask, and how we came yeah. about. So, I often say is we mirror it and the sort of the AFC Wimbledon sort of story where we we were part of um Cla Clapton FC, which obviously they're in Essex senior, um, big fan base were already there. Um, obviously, they fell out with the, um, the chairman or felt the club could go in a different direction. So um, they just decided to kind of set up their own, which is about two, two three seasons ago now. Um, so just I got, got um, some advice, obviously, from the football clubs. And we decided to, I think we looked around initially, um, but then we obviously we ended up in the middle six, um, Div 1. Um, we tried to apply for the Prem which would probably be a mistake, you know, jumping in so quickly, because obviously it's levels, isn't it? You don't know, you don't know. Yeah, obviously, yeah. You're at five, you don't know what the levels are black. We were kind of shocked initially when we started playing games um, at um, step eight, because there's some real quality down there. Um, so yeah, that was our first season, started in the middle sex, Div one. Um, we won the double, and uh, we've been growing ever since. Um, as you can see behind them, um, the big um, thing last season was the shirts. That went viral. Uh, kind of, kind of helped us as well in terms of our notoriety. Um, started to build a kind of a global brand. I think our shirts are in every continent now. And I think stadiums sold out. You know, some um, prem away, some prem teams. Not going to call them out, obviously, but <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, we outsold some of them, and they're still selling right now because obviously they have meaning behind them. So um, and our, our club and our values are, you know, what we believe in the ethos of the club, which we'll go into a bit later. Um, that's what I think what brings all the fans together really obviously the football would always be the forefront of what we do but obviously our ethos and other community of what we do in the community helps to bring people that may not necessarily be football fans but want to be a part of the family and what we do no i hear that still i mean that's that's great one thing i must admit like when i go down there it's like no other like I, i've been down yeah. to obviously where we where play down at Wadham lodge um and again just the atmosphere the crowd again and you've got Without saying no names, but who's the other crowds over the other side? Like, there's there's two sets of crowds, isn't there? There's the there's the flag bearers, and then there's another set of flags as well. It's it's two sets. Yeah, so you've got obviously you've got you've got you've got you've got the core fans that uh, play at uh, one end, and then you've got the brigata we call them. They're at the other end. They're more obviously I think more uh, foreign based Italian sort of theme, so more kind of linked to the ultras where you might get the odd flair back in the day, you know, <laughs> and a lot of that. But you know, we do warn them, but you know, that's them. But that's where we've got the two kind of sets of fans. But it's all one club, really, all one family. Yeah, it's brilliant, especially on match day when you, you know, one of the, the songs where you know it will start from the Brigata one end and then it'll go to the, straight to the opposite end, and then it's, it's sort of as I said before, it's just like being in a sort of professional environment, it's incredible to sort of noise that's generated and just obviously it G's us up. Unfortunately, sometimes it G's up the opposition as well, but, you know, it's just fantastic to you know, be able to be a part of that and just, you know, as I said before, just every Saturday is just incredible. Now, again, going back to that shirt behind you, talk to me about that shirt. That shirt looks, oh, excellent, superb. Like, who, who is behind it? Who's yeah, like, for, uh, yeah. for a little bit of a free deal there. <laughs> <laughs> that will get you. I mean, that will get you. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get you one. So, yeah, so as I said, the club, we're, we're um, fan-owned, um, run by members. Um, you can become a member um, just by signing up, um, registering, and pay um, a subscription fee. And also you get part, you get to own a club and be a part of the, um, um, the decision-making process. So simply, this is similar to how the shirt was made. There was kind of 12 different shirts. Um, 
um, the fans all voted round upon round um, how um, what they wanted, and eventually, obviously, this was the one that obviously they decided on to um, to go forward with it. And for those who don't know, obviously, the history behind it is linked to the the Spanish brigades, obviously, in the 1930s, the Civil War. So again, a lot of people in Spain, which is I think where I think our shirts are sold out the most, kind of are linked to it. They had families in the brigades, or you know, who were linked to it. So um, that's why it's got historical value behind it, and it means something as well for the Republic. So um, so from then on in, as I said, it was it just went viral. The beauty of social media. Um, um, a shirt it was from a friendly, um, and all of a sudden we woke up, you know, Sunday morning, Monday, and it was in Spanish newspapers. Everyone's asking about the shirt, where to get it, how to get it. Um, even linked all the way around to us being invited to Barcelona for a friendly. Wow, Barcelona for a friendly? What? Yeah. What? Messi wanted to play against you, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much like a Champions League game. We got there, yeah. touched down Monday afternoon, played Monday evening. Had to fly back on Tuesday, so you know, but it was a great experience for the guys. You know, what I mean, just all from a shirt and just from a club having core values and another club sharing those values. They reached out to us and wanted us to kind of commemorate their anniversary. Hundred percent. I mean, to this day, if you wear that shirt and you go around anywhere in Spain on your holidays, you're going to get mobs left, right, and centre. But that's a way to make friends quite easily. And I suppose we might have to get you one because I've seen you knocking about with a Northwest London shirt. I'm not sure about that one. To be honest, I mean, look. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I respect the message. I mean, I, to yeah. be fair, I tell them I might get one myself. But there we go. I lo- listen, I love a shirt. Any shirts that go going begging can spare. <laughs> and I, I see my eyes fixated on that one behind you guys. I'm trying to look at YouTube. I'm seeing that shirt behind you. It's well located right there. So something happen, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I appreciate that, guys. I mean, look. Let's move on to like this season now. Obviously, you're now in the Middlesex Combines. It's league, is that Middlesex right? Prem, yeah. Middlesex Prem. Well, Middlesex Prem, sorry. Obviously, with some familiar teams to myself, you know, Hilltop. Obviously, you mentioned um, Northwest London as well. Like, how are you finding being in that division? Um, well, it's our second season. Um, so, obviously, the obviously first season obviously was new to us. This, um, we kind of know what to expect, I think, kind of the standards and what, what, what we need, I think, to push on for the league. Um, even last season, I think we were still in contention before kind of it all got curtailed and stuff. We were still in contention. So um, I think we're well aware in terms of the teams that we play. And like, like I've mentioned before, in terms of how diverse it is, um, a lot of teams, their core values is to play. So they'll play from the back continuously. A lot of more technicians than I find playing in sort of like Essex similar leagues. Um so I, I find I find it enjoyable because it's different, a different game, different battle every week. You know what I mean? So as I said, we do our homework. We try to pick a team or a squad every week that's gonna kind of compete, maybe and kind of exploit their weaknesses, or uh, um, obviously and deal with our strengths as well. Yeah, I mean, it's just just to echo what Jess said, basically, you know, myself and a few of the few of the senior players. I say senior because you know we might look young. We're a little bit we're pushing thirty and above, to be honest with you. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're obviously, a lot of us have played at that Essex senior sort of rhyme and level. So we're used to every team playing exactly the same sort of way, you know, sort of, you know, long ball sort of headers and bodies sort of. Everywhere. So it is, it is good to sort of, you know, um, I mean, to be fair, in terms of the travel, it's something that's a little bit, you know, um, to be fair. Think, like, that was my next question. Usually it's Houston and then just a, a short train somewhere else, which is, which is, which is doable. But um, in terms of the actual different styles of play, it's good that you have a, um, you know, you have, a league where a lot of people played in sort of different ways and we're not sort of up against the same thing every week and it does make it a little bit more enjoyable and obviously with the added, added incentive that everybody is raising their game against us it's just every, every weekend is something you know it's something different and it's you know um i was quite um surprised pleasantly surprised in terms of the, the quality of the league when, when, I, when i first joined uh, i think you might have uh, hit a nerve with one of those comments speak for your, <laughs> your, your old self bro <laughs> Um, so yeah, and I was going to say as well, in fact, over 30s is not old, by the way. Listen, we all have got to get there, so yeah. Um, <laughs> shout out to Chelsea as well, Chelsea Sparks, yes, yes, boys. And then Elliot's just laughing out loud. I'm guessing he's laughing at that comment as well, so um, he seems to have found it funny as well. Um, let's talk about um, your grounds, um, because obviously, you know, you're playing at Wadham Lodge, but again, you're, you're fighting for this ground, your old ground, old spotted dog. Talk to me about the ground and, and the history behind it. Well, I mean, 
it's probably a contentious issue, but I used to play for the uh, the rival captain as well. So, <laughs> yeah, oh, so, yeah. okay. And, uh, <laughs> so we know all about that background. Um, I think, oh, come on, you put me on the spot here. I think, is it old, oldest in London, is it? I believe I think so. I think old, so. Oldest in London. And um, yeah, that takes me back, um, that sort of picture. Um, never the sort of greatest surface to play on, but oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of what it was and sort of, you know, you used to pray for away days back in the, back in the day. So the only club that you thought that pray were away uh, this week. But yeah, in terms of the work that's been done on that, it's just, that is just something that I just can't fathom in terms of the amount of, um, you know, our hours that have been put in by volunteers, to completely unpaying people that are like, it, it's it's just completely like, ridiculous what they've done. I mean, when I, when I, Obviously, the fantastic news that we sort of at the middle of last season that we sort of um, acquired the deeds and we were sort of allowed to get back on the old spot dog, um, you know, such a historic ground for us and to have that for Clapton CFC. I thought, okay, well, that's going to take at least five or six years before you get yeah, that into <laughs> any true. sort of way. Well, on the level of the grass as well, I was thinking you might I mean, take yeah, I mean, five yeah. years. I goal kicks in the first half. He used to always attack one way. And then people used to say, Jack, you're not kicking as far this half. It's like, okay, yeah. Well, it is on a hill. So, yeah, give me a little bit of a um, but you know, just volunteer work that's gone in, and then now I just like—I mean, I saw—I think only a few weeks ago there was a f- few photos going around. You so short saw actual like you know strips of grass and lines in the pitch, and you're thinking, "What's going on?" This is completely different to how a lot of people remembered it. So I think you know when that's all done, that's going to be incredible, and that's going to be a complete catalyst for um, for this club to to push on further completely. Um, and like Jack said, um, you know, in terms of where we're at, I mean, we didn't expect to get back nowhere near. And and the whole reason of the club being set up was eventually to go to the spiritual home of the Osported Dog. I mean, you know, what, what, we've, what we've heard before, you know, the club was under threat in terms of actually the ground being a football ground, you know, and their, the, their fans, long before see the club was set up, went to, out their way to kind of make sure it stayed a football ground, you know. So not too many football grounds in London, if we're really honest. You know, a lot of clubs fighting over a couple of grounds, ground sharing, some even there's three teams sharing a ground. So uh, I think it's very important, obviously, we kept it. Um, and as, as Jack said, you know, it was great news you know, um, early last season um, that we acquired it. And obviously everything is now surrounding and getting back into the ground. Um, it's going to be a momentous occasion, really, to obviously when we do play that first, first game back, um, we think it's going to break all attendance records. But it's, it's, it's a testament to kind of the volunteers and, you know, all the... All the community members of what they've done all throughout the years and you know it's time for them to be rewarded really. Yeah, big shout out to you know the Ellsworth Dog Trust and everybody that's been involved in that in terms of uh you know I think I went down for one or two days in terms of it and during the first lockdown lockdown 1.0 when uh they were clearing all the stuff there and just like the amount of work that it's taken um you know on a daily basis and just a lot of um great stuff that Clapton is doing is thanks to the members and the volunteers that we have at this club and it's just you know they don't obviously a lot of it is in terms of um, the football and people talking about results on the pitch, but I think off the pitch, it's just absolutely world class what we're doing. And uh, just a shout out to everybody that's volunteered, everybody that's donated, everybody that's yeah. given a bit of their time, everybody that's even shown an interest and shown, you know, retweeted stories or whatever, and just you know, all wished us luck. Just it's been absolutely incredible. And as Jeff said, that first that first game is going to be unbelievable. And I. I'm knocking at the door saying you cannot drop me for that game. No chance. There's going to be a availability for that game. When you're away and, you know, you have to go to, you know, Zone 6 for London, availability might a little bit, be a little bit scarce. But, you know, first game of the old spot of dog, I think, there's going to, I think everyone will be available for that one. Right. The question that I need to know is when are we looking at? Come on, what? I need a date. I need a date in my diary. Cause like, yo, okay. There's still there's still things to do, obviously, in and around it. I think the pitch itself is actually in top, top, top quality condition. You know, thanks to kind of obviously the Spurs Foundation and um, you know the the just the people that's been working on it. Obviously, well done to them. But Shout out to it herself. Yeah, yeah, to be fair, yeah, what I'm to do, and obviously his links. But yeah, in terms of, we don't know, we don't know, obviously, we've got to sort out the change of rooms and a few other things around it. We've got to make it, obviously, make the health and safety kind of worthwhile because, you know, it's been neglected for a good reason, a good while. But as I said, we're looking to get there for next season. That's the aim. So we'll, you likely think maybe a pre season game, that'll probably be the one. Okay, pretty season. Here we come. Okay. Um, I've got to give a couple of shout outs to people in the stream. Shout out to Paul Oshin. Is that correct? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out as well. Um, I think you rattled a couple of people with that, that senior uh, remark, you know. I'm including myself in it. I'm old. People think I'm young. I'm not at all. <laughs> 
Uh, I also got to give a shout out to Shamdar, who's saying he wants the number six, please, for that game. So, Gaffer, make sure you get the number six for him and uh, make sure you get a starting place. <laughs> but, uh, That's in the contract, I'm afraid. You know, it's, oh. it's copyrighted. Oh, I mean, guys, make sure you read your contracts because the gaffer's kind of pulling out of that already one. He's, he's, he's not having it. Uh, <laughs> um, right, we're going to get into some action now. Uh, you sent over some clips. So, again, we're going to go into some of this and then you're going to tell us what the moment was and where the game was and et cetera, et cetera. So, here's yeah, yeah. the first one. because we knew we were going to get the chance. Well, that game looks familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the overhead kick, as you say. Ah, oh, okay, okay. I mean, look, shout out to Jay as well with that overhead kick. Masterclass. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I've got to say it was a masterclass. But yeah, it was, it was, it was. I would question the defending then on there. There's a few things I, was, I, was, I wasn't happy about there. Overhead <laughs> kick. I mean, obviously it's no chance. Is it? So I'm like, yeah, he's got to yeah. Just to, to be able to think so quickly in that position and just wrap your foot around it in that, yeah, quality. Well, I've got to give you the pre-assist in that one. It was that straight from a goal kick and then... Found yeah, his way to I mean, one, of, one, of, one of my, without getting too technical about the whole football, I'd, you know, in terms of football skills and all that sort of thing, I think one of my strengths is distribution and, yeah. you know, to be able to, you know, I'd, I mean, to be fair, it's not professional football. Let's just try a few things and try and play it out quickly from the back and see what happens. So it's one on one. Nine see, times out of ten, it's good. Jimmy's going to win it. Yeah, so. see, see Jimmy free in, in, in the middle of the park. He flicks it on and then, you know, two passes and Marine on goal. I mean, it's, you know, not quite Man City. You know, but, uh, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it goes Edison to Aguero. So Sometimes it's not it goes it. Edison to Aguero. <laughs> and who finished it off, should I say? Lewis. Lewis, he got that that day. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out to Lewis as well. Um, great finish as well. Um, we're going to move on to the second clip. All right, so let's take a look at this one. In the final five now. Getting a sense of it. Must be now or never. Lewis Saviero will take the corner. It's going to happen now. It's going to happen now. Oh, it comes off the shin of a defender. Lewis Saviero manages to keep it in. Some fancy footwork gives us some space. She's had a shot. Oh, yeah! it's in! That girl again! Yeah! She has done it again! Almost a carbon copy of her goal against Crystal Palace. She cuts inside onto a stronger foot and just unleashes over the goalkeeper's head. Clapped him with a very deserved lead. So, yeah, I'll Sorry, go on. No, nah, that was it. I was just going <laughs> off the comments with that girl again. I mean, I'm, 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 you know, smiling from ear to ear. I mean, that is um, just the quality of what we have in, in, in the women's team. That's um, uh, Larissa Vieira there. That's just an incredible player that we've got from from this season. And shout out to my boy Stevie on, on the commentary there as well. Um, that was a horrible, horrible uh, day. <laughs> Hampton and Richmond Borough. Imagine going from East London all the way over to there. It was one of the, I don't know, I can't remember what it was. It was a couple couple months ago, but when, when it was, you know, the rain was chucking it down, every, everywhere was flooded, basically, apart from that 3G pitch. And it was a team that wasn't trying to play any sort of football as, at all. You know, long ball, long ball, long ball. And we just couldn't break through. We just couldn't break through the defence. And then sort of 85th minute, it came out to Larissa. She does, she's got a, um, a futsal background. Uh, so she's a Brazilian uh, superstar that we have. Um, and then, you know, just shimmy. Put it onto her right foot, Technics. and then just that's it. Just te their technique is mad. I mean, when I first saw her uh, doing her trials for Clapton, first of all, she came with the Adidas Predators, and when I saw them boots, I was like, "Yeah, this is a player." Right? I just knew it was going to be a player. You know what's the ball? Control it with the ball, yeah. and they have um, the ball underneath their foot, so it's the top of the foot that controls the ball. I was like, "Okay, this is a player right here." So yeah, she's been instrumental for us, but yeah, that's bring back memories of a fantastic day. That was, and shout out to the women's team. We're gonna definitely get promotion this year for sure. On the brush. 
better. You better. Uh, Paul, I should say, involved in that goal. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the one. Uh, the, the, previous uh, one. the previous one. He flicked, oh, on. well, well, he flicked it to myself, obviously, when I played it to Lewis. So. Yeah, you got to give him his two cents, man. Come on, you got to give Paul his... his, his yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, no, he's going to get, you know, we put the ball in the right area, he's going to win the balls nine times out of ten in the year, so it makes me look good with them kicks, I'm telling him. You put it five, <laughs> five yards by the side of him and he flicks it on. It's like, yeah, yeah, good distribution from the keeper. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, shout out to the women's team. That was that looked straight off the training ground, I'm guessing. Yeah, straight off the yeah, training I mean, ground. I, 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 to be fair, I've got... I've, I'm unfortunately I'm trying to take over the show here, but I'm, I'm going to have to give a shout out to uh, Claudio Gomez and uh, Brian as well, uh, yeah. manager and another assistant manager, uh, a captain for the women's team. Uh, um, just the the standards that we, we hold for each other and, you know, the training sessions are fantastic. That is literally how we want to play um, sort of 4 3 3 attacking football, keep you know, possession based. You know, um, European head coach, he wants to keep the ball, no long balls, and, you know, as I said before, that was a day where the other team were just doing long ball, long ball. We just kept persevering with the way that we play football. And um, at the moment, it's serving us well because we're just playing fantastically well and, you know, great strike and, the, you know, good good stuff, really. Jeff, are you taking tips for that as well, mate? Just, just <laughs> making it. <laughs> yeah, I'm on a Sunday watching, you know, with my notepad. You know, anything we can learn, we, we take it into Saturday. So, yeah, always picking up. You're always learning, don't you? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Right, let's get into uh, clip three. Let's take a look at this. Now, we didn't get to see much of the goal, but all I saw was absolute scenes. Um, I'm going to interject here before Jeff even speaks. This is before I joined, so I have no interest whatsoever in this clip. To be fair, this was a monumental, uh, monumentous, that word? A monumental, yeah. monumental uh, moment for the club, so I let Jeff go. No, so at that time, it was, uh, it was obviously heading towards the title and every game we had to win. Because obviously we won the league just by one point. So it was at a point we had to win. Um, and we were 4-2 down half time. So, you know, we had to kind of read the right act and just, you know, just let the players know, you know, we can't really let it go. Get, getting so so close to the end of the season. So we brought it back and we actually won 6-5 in that game. And that's the winning goal right at the end in injury time. 6-5? So, yeah, 6-5. So Who it, uh, it, was, it was a curve. I don't know if you know the curve. They play in Middlesex, Div One. Um, so yeah, so they're a decent team as well because really, first half they were really on it, put us back four two. Um, you, you wouldn't have really seen it, but yeah, it was a great finish by Elliot there. A lot of composure, especially after missing the first one. Um, you know, to kind of put it on his left foot and just bang it in. It's great composure, really. And as I said. We needed it. Without that win, we wouldn't have obviously won the title and gone up. So yeah, a shout out to Elliot as well. Fucking big player, big games, stalwart of the club. Just, yeah, absolutely. Mad mountain of a bloke and just, yeah, great personality to have on the pitch. And, yeah, obviously showed, you know, the big moments in the big games. You can come on and do something like that. Okay, I'm seeing a couple of comments coming through, so I've got to read them out. Um, <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting it. Elliot, Elliot Crosby got in everyone who said that day um, from left behind. <laughs> So, um, yeah. shout out Elliot Crosby, like you did there, Jack, as well. Um, before this is a comment from before, Shamdar saying, Pass the mic, Jack, call Blimey, laughing emoji. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely hate goalkeepers, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, all they've got on to say as well, Jack would have saved that. I think he's talking about the previous one, uh, yeah, 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 maybe, or maybe he was talking about for uh, for um, Lewis's goal. I, I mean, to be fair, you put too much faith in me, to be honest. With you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Elliot Crosby saying big up Jack so again he's a big fan of you <laughs> shout out to Elliot as well fan of Elliot as well I mean to be fair like, I, I will say like um, that is Elliot who scored a goal by yeah him. Elliot's the one that scored that goal for the for the 6-5 and just um, I mean in this game, I, I you know once again push, pushing on the senior sort of moment like I myself and Jeff and everybody else have played in when you're at our age and you played in so many different teams and just like to be at a team where everybody is like family is very, very rare. And when you find something like that, you just have to cherish it really. And not to get emotional, but uh, yeah, everyone at Clapson is my family. And so shout out to everybody at Clapson that's watching, everybody that's going to watch on the reruns on YouTube. So yeah, just absolutely love all you guys. That's why recruitment is so important. 
Exactly, exactly right. Um, we've got three hierarchy comments coming through from Paul, <laughs> Sam, and Elliot. What, what's, the, what's about hierarchy? What are we talking, talking about? Hierarchy. That's Elliot's phrase, isn't it? Respect so, the hierarchy. Know, the change room needs to respect hierarchy. Okay, so respect uh, the people in charge. Okay, yeah, okay. Kind of command, that's what it is. There you go, I hear you. Okay, okay. Right, we'll get into uh, clip number four, so let's run this one. <laughs> <laughs> that's making me want to go to a game right now like yeah. now um that's yeah that's that's obviously when we won the league um as i said that curve game was very important in obviously that game and obviously we, that's when we just beat roast to win the double um and that's just that's what our club's about if you're looking at family um you look at you've got children there all different races creed you know the cities all there um just jumping and celebrating and being one family um, that's the record attendance, I think, for that league as well. It was 1,200 that day, all fitting at the back of um, Wadham Lodge um, to see us win the league. So, so celebrations, I think mean, they carried on throughout the night. Um, they carried on, you know, all weekend. And it's still, it's still a lot of people, you know, you talk to them now, say the best day, footballing day of their life, the best game that they've been to in terms of the celebrations and just people just coming together, really. Um, it was kind of vindication as well for the setting up the club, you know, um, of what we're about, you know. Because uh, it started off with a few people with an idea, and it ended up with us winning the league in front of a thousand two hundred people. So you know, you can't really beat that, can you? No, not at all, man. I mean, that that's crazy. And again, it's making me want to go back to football. Right, <laughs> forget the second of December. I want it right now. Like seeing scenes like that, and yeah. one thing as well, like the couple of games that I've been to, like the fans again. Shout to the fans have been amazing. Like. The, the chants, the, the, the flags, everything. It's yeah. just the atmosphere, man. You don't really get that at um, Premier League games. Like, for some reason, and again, you can have, like, 50-odd thousand fans at Premier League games, but you'd only get a small portion of them singing. At a Clapton game, you might have 300, 400, 1,200, and they're all singing their hearts out. That's, that's credit to, to you guys. Um, yes, um that's, that's, as I said, that's what it's about. And that's why I think a lot of people became disillusioned with football at the highest level. It became too corporate, too expensive. So as an alternative, why not go to your local club, community club, kind of support what they're doing, come and enjoy, really, stand up, sing. It's a throwback, you know, to what people are used to. And that's why they come every week and they come religiously. You get people, every time they come to their first game, you know, they'll probably put it on Twitter or social media, you know, I went to this. They'll post clips up and they'll be like, I'm going back. I'm going to invite this person, that person. And that's how we're grow, growing as a club, really. That sort, that sort of a kind of atmosphere is infectious and it makes you want to come back. Mm. No, I echo that as well. Um, got a couple more comments as well. Shout out to uh, Mr. S. Stanley, my guy, Mr. Crosby. Um, and got Shamdar again, showing his love for Jack as well. Love Jack. Um, <laughs> so you seem to be a very popular guy uh, tonight, Jack. Where's the love for Jeff, man? Give Jeff some love as well, man. They're all part of the team. They're all players. Showing's yeah. top striker, Shams, my assistant manager. So, as I said, we're all family, all supporting each other. So, I've known some of these guys for over 20 years as well. So, I'm not going to put their age in there, but no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been together for a while. So, it's good to kind of work coming together. I've been doing this for a long while. So, it's good we can kind of get together as is on a Saturday now when it gets a bit more busy and things. Oh, things kind of take preference in terms of family, work and whatnot. So it's good we can still come together on a Saturday and still kind of recollect. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Okay, right. We're going to get into the final clip now. So let's take a look at this one. <laughs> oh, man, I love that. I love that, man. That's yeah. a great. Who, oh, first of all, 
Who put the delivery over there? Beautiful delivery. It might have been Sherwin or Jake. Don't quote me wrong. Sherwin's in the comments, so he, if it is him, he's going to let us know. But it might have been Sherwin or Jake. Um, if it was right footed, it's Sherwin for sure. Yeah, because he cooked it. I think it might have been showing. It's showing on make one of them, but as I said, um, but yeah, that, that goal was kind of like when we actually secured the league because we're two up. Um, as we've known this season, some parts of last season, two nil was a dangerous scoreline for us. So um, for the third goal, that was his hat-trick goal, three nil win, a uh, game was done, the league was kind of secured. And I know as a manager, when you're in that sort of situation, you can, yes, I can rotate and bring on the subs now. So there's no complaints, everyone got to play. There we go. And who was that finished off by? That was Josh. Uh, Josh had a joke He's kind of he's a popular player with the young tons as well. Big season for him this this season, I reckon. He's uh, started off quite well on the wing, and um, you know um, he's played a little bit higher as well. And he's sort of come, you know didn't really like the experience that has come back to us. And so hopefully this season he's going to come and you know use that experience that he's had and sort of on the wing. That's where we're dangerous as well. So I'm, I'm excited for some of his performance going to be this season. Yeah, man, he got his hatchet yeah. right there. Mr. F. Stanley is shouting out the ball in. What a ball in. Um, got a question for you, though, Jeff. Um, yeah. Mr. Paul O'Shea yeah. is saying, are we winning the league, Uncle G? Yes, Uncle. Yes, Uncle. Yeah, of course we're winning the league. That's what we're in here for. You know, we're winners. We're winners. As I said, we're born winners, so that's what we're going for. We're going for the league, so we're going to win it. So, again, I'd like to see you there in your shirt um, celebrating with us. Okay, okay. Listen, you know, you can't get me on side like that, man. Come on. You're trying to do to me, man. I'm trying to be neutral, bro. Uh, uh, I've got another question as well, probably for the pair, yeah? Are we going for the treble? To be fair, we've had, me and Jeff had a little conversation um, just before we went on air because we've got uh, one of our, I think our second fixture is a uh, is a cup game. And whereas before the cup games, we sort of used to sort of rotate, you know, um, Whereas now I think we're literally thinking like we want to try and win everything that's in front of us really and try and be as strong as possible. So I don't want to put words into Jess's mouth, but I think we are trying to trying to go on strong on all sort of three, four. I don't know how many cups there are. Yeah, that's the problem. This it? is the thing with COVID. You don't know what's going on in terms of what's happening with the cup competitions. But in terms of, I think, and you know, because of that, whatever's going to be put in front of us, we're going to try and win it. So yeah. we're going to go by our strongest team for, for each single league mm -hmm. cup competition. Okay, I mean, let, let's go back to the league because obviously I know the league more more than the cups. You got a yeah. very competitive league. Very. Where are you currently in the league, um, and who do you see as your biggest rivals as well? <laughs> um, the funny thing is, it's weird because like if you're just looking at it now, and there's some teams up there that weren't there last season, and there's some teams up there which are a bit further down. For instance, Hilltop near the bottom. But we know obviously the quality that they possess. They yeah, potentially yeah, put yeah. a run together and be at the top. So, I mean, yeah. if I'm going to go on last season, you, you expect um, Brentham to be there. You expect Hilltop to, to be there. Um, Larkspur probably be in and around it, potentially. Cool. London Samurai, another team we've come up with. Um, you know, very good quality team, technical team. You expect them to be up there. So, again, when, when you're winning leagues, I think it's all about that mini sort of table that you have and making sure you don't lose against your rivals and, you know, um, and pick up points. And you know, if you finish usually top of that mini league, um, you usually win the league. So at the moment, we're not doing too bad. I think we've got like, what, I'd say about seven points out of nine in that mini league. So we're not doing too bad. Um, and I, I, no, as I say, our fans has against any team. There's nothing to be scared of in this league. I know that if we play to anywhere in our potential, the squad that we have and the players that we have, we'll, we'll win this league. Okay. Yeah, we've got some comments in there as well. Shamdar saying the biggest rivals is Brentham. But we've also got a member from Hilltop saying it has to be Hilltop. So shout out to uh, Ahmed Yassalam. Yeah. Means well. I mean, a Hilltop player. <laughs> yeah, he's part of the Hilltop squad. So, okay. uh, to, to, to be fair, like, we've played, we played Hilltop in pre-season where we didn't really have a... I think we didn't play at our best. And I think they had a, a lot of the ball. And I think they, they I think it was 2-1 in the end. But I think they, they could have won by more. Um, but then when it when it came to where it mattered in the league, we sort of managed to <laughs> completely, you know, change our sort of tactics and sort of grind out for a two 0 win. But it, for the song, it, I mean, it's yeah, no, no. To be fair, I think Hilltop are one. Of, in, in terms of the teams where you think who plays the best football in that league, you have to put Hilltop. Yeah, yeah, one hundred. Have to put Hilltop up there in terms of what the players they have and. Um, oh, I forgot his name now. Big man in sort of you, you know who is uh, holding a sort of hard midfielder or something. Like yeah, that. you have to stop him playing. Otherwise, he, it can he's be a, a good player. They've got, they got good players, and I think that's why we were saying before about this league. It's sort of like 
yes, in terms of if you look at player for player, we should probably be up there and should probably be trying to trying to win on all sort of fronts. But you know, everybody plays in such a different way. It's it's you know sort of um, because obviously we're not professional, so it's sort of like trying to adapt week in week mm-hmm. out in terms of how different teams play. Availability as well. Isn't availability, it? all sort of X Y Z things can happen, and the fact that obviously, as you know, in terms of our, our following, you know. If teams who are usually used to playing in front of nobody suddenly play in front of 300, it's a completely different game yeah. to uh, what it was would have been before. Yeah, very right. Um, Armin's come back and said, respect Sharp. So I think it's Sharp he was on about. Big tall yeah, guy. Right. Yeah, yeah. Baller, okay. baller, absolute baller. Now, with that league, I've actually seen quite a few teams play. Obviously, I've seen Hilltop play quite a few times. I've seen you you guys play against Northwest London, which ended up being a, a nil-nil draw. I came all that way. Sure. For a nil-nil draw, guys. What's that about? Yeah, some of the strikers were not on fire there. They're in the comments, so. Say that again, sorry? Some of the strikers were there. They're in the comments right now. They didn't have their shooting boots on that day. Oh, who was that? Come on, out them. Come on, Sherman was there. He knows. He knows. Okay, okay. Yeah, what happened to his shooting boots? He might have, might have left them back. Yeah, it was a hot day, and I know Sherman likes to play a lot of cricket, so he might have been too busy thinking about that 22-yard pitch rather than the 100-yard one. I think oh, he hit the post as well. Oh. He did. I thought I thought he left his shooting boots back at the spotted dog. That's the reason why. <laughs> but, um, maybe that. But look, there's other teams in there that we haven't mentioned. Also, obviously, there's Cricklewood, um, Indian. Yeah, that's what I'm I agree because Cricklewood at now at the bottom, so it's very difficult. So you're thinking, okay, if Cricklewood kind of find their form, they're going to go on a run. That's why it's a very competitive league at the moment. Because shout out to teams like Kensington Dragons who are like near the bottom. Now yeah. they're they've moved up, so you you like to think they have strengthened in a bit more. So again, you don't know until you actually go and play them. You can watch their clips on YouTube. You, you know you can see, but you don't know until you actually play them or get in the game and you think, okay, cool, we need to maybe adapt and and adjust to how they're playing. So you just, you've got to respect anyone, really. You've got to respect everyone in this league. A couple of signings here, a couple of signings there, and all of a sudden the team group becomes really strong. I think to be fair, like to, you know, to build on that point, first game of the season, we we played a team that were, you know, that are going to be near the bottom or bottom half of the table. And, and, you know, they put a fight against us and they managed to get a 1-0 victory against us. Every single team... There's, there's no easy mm-hmm. game. There's no easy game in this league. You have to be at your best, and you know it's it, it's one of the you know one of the good things about um, about the league. And to be fair, as I said before, you know quite uh, I said before, I was surprised in terms of the quality of the league. Mm-hmm. I, I, really? I, it, it's very it's very good to be honest with you. And like it's it's good to see everybody you know playing a different side of football. And everyone everyone in this league, like everyone could be everyone. It's like the championship. I say that as a season ticket holder at Leeds United. <laughs> everyone can be everybody. So it's one of them ones where like we have to be on our game. We can't rest on our laurels or anything like that. So it's a good position to be in where everybody has to be on point to, to win mm-hmm. a game of football. Fantastic stuff to, to watch. Fair enough. It sounds like Jeff's going to dip into the January transfer window as well. Might bring in Ooh. some new signers as well. So uh, we'll wait to see see some uh, new transfer availings. Um, Mr. Mm-hmm. Stanley's still talking about that game that I came to the nil nil. Yes, to be fair. Yeah, it was a poor game. Yes, I know. Sorry, but it was nil nil. Um, he says, don't get me started as well. Um, and then obviously, Ahmed saying, uh, tough league. Anyone could beat anyone on the day. Oh, yeah. So, what you said as well there, Jack. Um, so, yeah, look, going forward now, um, what is the plans for the future? Obviously, I'm hearing winning the league, trebles, all the rest of it. But what about plans off the pitch? Obviously, the old spotted dog, you want to get back to there for pre-season. Anything else that we might have missed out? A new shirt, maybe? You know, new wee wink? <laughs> maybe. I think this one's still selling. So, you know, we've still got we still got some work to do on this one. Um, I think just as a club, I think we just want to grow and grow. As I said, our members, I think we've just reached 1,500 members now, which is actually tremendous. As, again, for a club our size, considering... Um, the, the time we've been together, you know, um, sort of established. Um, we just want to build our membership up and just help and support local causes, really, um, that we have been doing. Um, that's the ethos of our club. That's what we want to do, um, trying to kind of trailblaze at the moment. Because we're not really kind of looking at other clubs thinking, oh, look what they're doing. We're just trying to set our own trends and kind of like clubs. If they feel that's the right way to do it, then follow us. But, you know, we're just trying to be inclusive as much as we can. We've got like kind of young times there coming up. We've got development sides. We've got a women's development side, obviously, we've got the women's team here. So we're just trying to build our club and our brand as much as we can. And as I said, um, long term is going forward. We'll be back at the dog, obviously, back in Newham, Forest Gate. Hopefully, as I said, we can use it as a kind of a community hub where people can come and kind of do, um, instead of kind of hiring other places out, extortionate fees, come and use kind of our clubhouse. 
um, for the community meetings or anything like that. And when we, we sort of when we raise revenue, it all always goes to good causes. Anything we raise always goes to good causes. Like that. when you come to watch us, obviously it's a donation. Um, and I, again, it will go to stuff like the Magpie Project. Um, we did football versus blood cancer before. Um, yeah, so um, it's a Christmas toy for coming up soon. So anything like that, that's what we're going to support and we're going to keep doing that off the field. Yeah, I think uh, just yeah, just to add on to that, like in, in terms of an actual club, you have to sometimes stop and you know take stock of what actually has happened between. In terms of we've had two curtailed seasons at the moment, and that's basically founded in is it twenty eighteen? Yeah, or 2019, 2018, and it's like we've, we basically had one full season at the moment, and yet so far there's you know men's first team, men's development team, women's first team. Can I shout out the fives as well? Shout out the fives. Team. They're the winners five, at the moment. Five, women's five teams. I think that I'm getting for a long time. Yeah, um, trailblazers. Non-binary um, uh, training sessions as well. Yeah, there's so, you know just to get people from from the local area to be playing football is just a fantastic thing. And as Jeff had mentioned before, in terms of the Magpie project, um, we've got a hardship fund for the coronavirus as well. Some people yeah. haven't been able to. That's ongoing you know, right now. Yeah, it's still ongoing. I think we managed to raise about ten thousand pounds, which is an obscene amount of money in terms of. Being able to raise that money for people that are out of work and you know just sort of no you know no questions asked if you if you, if you need that sort of a you know a few few pounds to get you through the week that sort of can help you out that so it's just so so proud to be um, you know part 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 of a club that does some things like that and in terms of more sort of um you know more in terms of a vanity project with goalkeepers have got a new shirt which I'll be displaying to oh, my, my, that my, in there, um, you know? Yeah, I can't avail it except tomorrow evening on the Instagram live. I'm doing my own one for the club, and uh, yeah, we've got a new goalkeeper shirt there because um, the colours at the moment are yeah, not great. Green's all right, but the yellow one is, is horrendous. So, <laughs> yeah, let's yeah, uh, yeah, If he's making saves and, and, and assisting as well, you've got to get him looking right, man. Come on. Come on. I don't, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. some will say, is it a fashion show? Or is he there to make saves? <laughs> <laughs> it's not professional. Okay, okay. I mean, look, you got to look good when you're doing good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> um, listen, before we wrap up, is there anything else that you guys want to get off your chest? Um, like any things that you've got coming up? Um, socials as well. Um, first game you're looking forward to coming back? Any teams that you're looking forward to playing? Obviously, Hilltop's in, in the stream. Obviously, you mentioned Brentford before. Anyone that you're looking forward to playing? Um, anyone in particular? No one in particular. Um, I just think, as as Jack has mentioned before, at the moment, obviously with, with COVID and what's happening now, um, it the hardship fund is the big thing that we're doing kind of right back right now. So again, we're just asking that anyone who's um, out there to donate and um, you know support members in this hard time because we are family, we are community. You know, some of us are lucky to be furloughed, some of us haven't. So um, if there's anyone obviously watching. Um, you know, feel free to kind of follow the social media links. Um, you know where to donate. Um, you can become a member if you like, obviously, what, what, what our core belief system and stands up. So, um, so come in and join us. And again, um, we post regularly what we're doing. Um, I think our next game is Ken. And I think Kensington away is sure in terms of what we're going to be allowed in terms of the crowds, but we're just hoping, obviously praying things go to plan and you know we can get the crowds back as soon as possible and get back to some for normality, whichever whatever normality will be from this sort of end. No, I fully hear that. Jack, have you got anything else to add or are you all talking about? <laughs> <now? laughs> you understand you're in, in terms of um in you know it, in lockdown, obviously, when you've not had football, you get time to sort of reflect on the sort of things that you, you know, you took for granted, really, in, ter in terms of, um, you know, uh, just, it's just so, just to be able to go and play a bit, bit of football and, yeah. and to do anything like that and just, you know, the things that uh, we're, we're allowed to do, thanks to all the volunteers at Clapton mm -hmm. and everyone in sort of the committees and everything like that. It's so very, very easy. I mean, you know, we've, We've, we've been in this game for a long time and it's just like to turn up to a, to, to a match and not have to worry about kits, not have to worry about training pitch, not to worry about where we're going to be playing, not have to worry about nets, this, that and the other. It's just like there's so much that goes on off the field, which yeah. I think is just sort of a... Uh, I mean, not, not taking for granted, maybe taking for granted, but like there's some of the younger ones, but like in terms of like, I think when people come to this club, I think they need to understand that like there is a lot that goes on off, off, off the pitch, which is mm -hmm. like so much more bigger than what you know, what the heroes of camera is to say. Absolutely. And like, they're, they're just a shout out to everybody that's a volunteer, everybody that's a member of the club. 
everybody that has just even shown mm -hmm. uh, an interest in Clapton. I mean, if you ask Alexa right now who their favourite uh, football team is, it says Clapton Community FC, and I don't know why that is, but as long as that <laughs> keeps going, just keep asking. How are you ready to bug Alexa? How are you ready to do that? I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. Someone like uh, Amazon must have been bored. But, ba but basically, yeah, just shout out to everybody that's um, anything to do with this team, women's team, men's team, non-binary team. Yeah. I love you all. And, um, yeah, it's been fantastic. to, And an honour, to be honest with you, to, whenever I put on the armband, it is, I think people sort of think I take it for granted. I don't at all. It's, it's an absolute honour to be part of this club and to, to be picked as being someone that represents, um, you know, the core values and what, what, what we're trying to do. No, awesome for that. And even you got got, um, like, admiration from the opposite opposition from Hilltop saying, well done, club. Big respect to Clapton yeah, CFC, exactly. more than football. So, I respect the horse up as well. I think they do a lot of stuff, um, you know, beside behind the scenes and obviously within their kind of constraints. I think I saw the other day that to get a game on, they were even painting the lines. You know what I mean? That's, that's <laughs> that sort of stuff. People just turn up and play, but some people to put that, you know, that effort sort of behind the scenes. So, Hilltop, you know, we've had a lot of runners with them. Our first final was with Hilltop, um, took us to pen penalty. So, we've got a history of Hilltop and respect them, you know. Uh, um, a long way, so yes, yeah, so if we're climbing the ladder, hopefully they can come up with us. No, I fully agree with that as well. And I've got a shout out to Shandar as well, saying big up Roots TV. See you at one of our games oh, soon. Okay. I will be coming soon as well. Hopefully, wink, wink, in that nice, beautiful shirt behind mm -hmm. you. But no, that's, that's a big point as well. I think um, what you're doing is um, is a, doing a big for grassroots a lot, a lot. Um, I was saying to Jack, um, sorry to Jack off camera as well. Your knowledge and stuff around the teams, you know, it shows you put their work in to know what all different teams and Sunday league teams and Saturday league teams are. I don't know where you find the time to do it, but you know, <laughs> fair play and good shout for you because it's a big void. Grassroots is a big void, especially with the uptake in YouTube teams. I think yeah. it's very good to kind of have a, 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 an unbiased kind of view of you know what's happening out there. So big up to yourself, and obviously we'll keep supporting you. Same way, I think, vice versa. No, of course, of course, without a doubt. Now, to be honest, I've been using this uh, lockdown time effectively to get to know people more, whether it, <laughs> by, whether it be via streams, articles, tweets, and all the rest of it. So I, I'm just like, I'm just a, a fan of grassroots, you know what I mean? I still feel yeah. like there's, there's more that needs to be done. Of and course. in order to, to do it, I was looking around thinking, who's going to do it? Okay, no one's going to do it. I'll have to do it. And then, you know, lo and behold. That's that attitude. That is that attitude. There you go. So, um, exactly, exactly that. But um, yeah, guys, I want to say thank you very much for joining me. I've, I've learned I've a lot. Um, I've really enjoyed it as well. And again, hopefully people in the comment section as well have enjoyed it as well. Thank you very much for joining us. Again, if you're watching this back, make sure you, you like, share and subscribe. And again, make sure you share their stuff as well. Again, Clapton CFC doing big things within their community as well. So make sure that you show them love as well. And uh, we'll see you guys all soon. Thank you very much for joining us. Peace.